Happy Tuesday, everyone. I'm so glad you're going to spend some time with me today. I really enjoyed our time together last night in the live video chat over on the Creative Crew group. It's really fun to be able to share your pictures and uh, showcase your work and talk about topics and really just have some time to spend with you. So I'm really starting to look forward to Monday evenings. So it is really early this morning and we are going to pick up right where we left off last or yesterday. All of these green pieces are loose and they're up on the wall and we are going to join this section together. Now I thought it would be really fun to do like a time lapse video and show you the way that I approach joining this section together. But what's really great about this is there's no right or wrong way of doing this. Some of you might actually start down here and that's okay. Some of you might start over here. Some of you might start in the middle and work your way on both sides. I'm going to start up at the top and so again there's no right or wrong way. But I thought I'd show you the progress and so I'll be showing you here on the grid because I think that'll be easy. And as we go I'll start to color in the blocks a darker color so that you see the progression as this section comes together. Once it's all together, we'll stop and take a look up on the wall and see how all of this looks. And then I do also have some questions that came in on uh, the video number three, video number two, and I think there's a question from the first video of this series. So we'll feature all of your questions uh, once we're done joining this section together. And then we're going to see if time allows us to carry on. I'm hoping so, but I have some errands to run this afternoon. So we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and start taking some pictures as I sew everything together. Here we are as we get started. So I want you to focus on block six and block nine. The first seam I'm going to sew is the seam right between those two blocks. Then I'm going to jump over to block two and 32 and join those two blocks together. Once those are sewn together and pressed, I'm going to join block 47 to the right side of those two blocks. And then once block 47 is joined, we're going to join those to the top two blocks and that will give us a partial seam, an open seam right where my arrow is. Then we're going to set this piece aside and we are going to work with block 64 up at the top right hand corner. We are going to join that on top of block 49, just like you see here. And once those two pieces are together, we can join that to our section just like you see here. Now this is all one section. We're going to put this back up on the wall and we're going to move to a different section. We're going to start with the section you see in blue, the little patchwork block, and we're going to join that to the left side of block 40. So now those are one piece and now we can add block 26 that you see right above it. Now we're going to put that aside and we're going to get this little heart applique block that you see right here. We're going to join that to the right side of the block right next to it. Once this is one piece, we're going to join this to the bottom of block number seven, right above it. And then once you have this section, we're going to add block number 17. Now this section in blue can be added to the right side of the red section, block 26 and 40. Once this is all joined together, you're going to notice now we have another partial seam in this area right here. So this is an open seam. We're going to set this section back up on the wall and move on to another section. 
We're going to start with this little block right here. This will be a partial seam. We're going to join it to the bottom of block 31, just like you see here. Once that is sewn and pressed, we're going to add block 29 right above it. Now we can add block number eight that you see to the right. And now that gives us a seam where we can join block number 35 directly below. At this point, we're going to set this section back on the wall and uh, we're going to focus on block 63 in the heart applique. That is going to give us a partial seam. And so we are going to stop right here for this video. So I'm thinking that time-lapse video was really helpful. <laughs> I think it turned out pretty good. And I like the way that you can see the progression from block to block. So I might actually use that in upcoming videos. So at any point, you can certainly pause the video and go back and really study the seams of how each section went together. And to be really honest, I my first thought this morning was to join this whole section together but as soon as I started I realized I had not done the embroidery for this block here or this block and I haven't done it for this block either <laughs> and so for today it was easier to join three sections and put them up on the wall and now I can go back uh, this afternoon and start thinking about how I'm going to do the names on these blocks I also did not add these two blocks to the right side of this block either because uh, we'll do that as we get this block done. So these two light green pieces are still loose and so is this block and we have not made this or this. <laughs> so here we are, we did these three sections. Again, pause the video and go back if you really want to study it, but I really like that time lapse video. So uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to show you what all of this looks like up on the board. Uh, so I think you'll uh, enjoy seeing what that looks like. So now I have five different questions that we're going to go over from uh, some viewers on the other three videos of this series. We're going to start with Lucy's question. What type of stabilizer do I use for the backs of my t-shirts? My favorite uh, interfacing is the Pelon P44F. I will put a link to that in the description box below so you can check out and read up on that interfacing. I've tried several, but this is my favorite. Oletta had a question. Uh, did I allow for seam allowances for the t-shirt blocks? And yes. So the way that my grids work is that uh, each one of these little blocks here represents a finished two inch square. However, when I cut my t-shirt blocks, I make sure to add half an inch on both the width and the length. So let's just take this little green section and let's pretend that that's a little tiny logo. On the grid, it represents a finished four by four inch square. However, when I cut out my logo, I will cut it out at four and a half by four and a half. And that gives me my seam allowances to join everything together. Once it's in the quilt, it'll actually finish at four inches by four inches. So I'm hoping, Oletta, that that was helpful. And if not, jump down to the comment section and uh, let me know if I can help any further. Chrissy had a question, and she just recently purchased a bolt of Pelon P911FF interfacing, and she was worried that that was the wrong interfacing. <laughs> um, so to be 100% transparent, Chrissy, I have never tried that interfacing. My favorite go-to is the Pelon P44F, and I found that at the very beginning of my t-shirt quilting, I tried a couple others that were very stiff and gave me some issues. Uh, but there's all kinds of interfacing. And so 
Um, what I did is I went on to YouTube and I searched your interfacing, the Pelon P9911, and I found this video. I'm going to link in the description box below. You can check that out. Uh, it seems to be a fusible featherweight interfacing. It looks almost very similar to the one that I like to use. It might be a tad bit stiffer um, just by looking at the video and how uh, it handles when she was working with it. So before you toss that out and go buy something new, why don't you take uh, some scraps of a t-shirt and work with your interfacing that you have and see if you like it because we're all different and what I like might be different from what you like. One thing I will say, I don't know how much the the uh, 911 cost. Uh, the P44F is 99 cents a yard. That's the regular price at Joann's. However, if you use a coupon, you get it for way less. And so it's very cost effective. And I'm not sure how that relates to how much you spent for yours. And so those are all things that you can think about for the future. But give it a try. And I would love to hear um, what you think about the 911 in the comment section below and keep me updated. Okay, this question is from Linda. Do I stabilize the patchwork blocks that go into my quilt with the t-shirts? And I do not. I just work with them the way that they are. The quilter's cotton uh, works very well with the t-shirt blocks, especially since we are stabilizing the t-shirts before cutting them out and sewing them into the quilt. And our last question is from Denise. And can I show the partial seams that are remaining in my quilt? And so in this uh, time-lapse video, I showed you where all the partial seams are going to be as we worked through these three sections. But what I'm going to do is go down here and color in everywhere that I know I'm going to have a partial seam so that you can pause the video and really uh, study those areas and I'm hoping that that will be helpful for you. So let me pause the video and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Now I'm hoping that I did not miss any. Sometimes it can be a little overwhelming just looking at everything that's not colored in. It's really easy to start seeing them as you start filling in all of uh, the colors and coloring in your squares, then they really start popping out. But just taking a look, I've colored in all of the partial seams that I know that I can see right off the bat, uh, an orange color. And so we have, let's start right up here, this little tiny orange block. That's a partial seam right in this area. And then we have another small little tiny one right in this area. Then I know that this will be a partial seam to join this section together. And then one right below it, right here. This one down here. This section, uh, I colored the whole thing, although really it's right these two blocks here. But I'm thinking I'll end up adding like a block that is four and a half by six and a half. So I just went ahead and colored all of this section. And then we have this tiny little one right here. So maybe if you pause the video and you really study it, you'll uh, start to understand why this would be a partial seam. What we're trying to achieve is a seam where we can have one continuous seam from the top of block number one to the bottom. To do that, we need to join these three blocks together. However, <laughs> right here uh, and right here, all of these uh, need to be done in a sequence. And so we'll have an open seam as we work our way around. And, and I'm hoping that that's not confusing. <laughs> What I really recommend is that you uh, cut out some blocks and you just practice with the partial seams because I think it's uh, a lot easier to follow along once you've actually done a few of them. 
and then uh, it all starts to come together. So those are my remaining partial seams that I can see right off the bat. And don't forget, we still have open seams. We have uh, an open seam on this section right here. We have an open section on this section right here. That's going to allow us to join these two sections right here on this seam. And once that's done, we can finish off this section right here. We also have an open seam on this section right here. That's going to allow us to join it to the blocks below it. And then we have an open seam right here. And that's going to allow us to join this section to this section. So I know it's all confusing. Maybe the time lapse video will also help. And so let's go ahead and take a look at everything that you see colored in up on the wall. So here we are. This is all of my sections up on the wall. One thing you'll notice is that I have not put them all the way to the top. I'm still working with these sections and so it's much easier to pull them down and put them back up where they are now. But once we get these sections uh, start joining the bigger sections together, then I'm going to shift everything up to the top of the wall as we fill in the rest of the quilt. So I really love the addition of the quilter's cotton and the patchwork in this quilt. I think it's added uh, some much needed color and contrast to really help blend in some of the pink shirts uh, that we have going into this quilt. I think there's, let's see, one, one or two other logos that are pink and uh, they're not even that bright of a pink. And so can you imagine all the blues and whites and grays and blacks with a bright pink uh, logo? The very first thing you would have noticed was that particular shirt. And so I think adding the bits of pink and other colors is really going to help keep your eye flowing over the entire quilt instead of being drawn to one specific shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and end today's video. I know it's not extremely long today. However, I need to figure out this block, this block, and this block and uh, add some names to some blocks. And I have not decided if I was going to just um, embroider the names onto fabric or if I'm going to do the names in applique. So let me figure that out and figure out... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, figure out how I'm going to do that <laughs> this afternoon and then I have some errands to run. So we will come back as we work with the name blocks in the next video. So I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, jump down to the comment section. Also, if this is your first time joining, there is a playlist with all of the videos for this series. So you can check that out and start from video number one until where we are now and you can follow along for the rest of this quilt and I will also link my Facebook page and the creative crew group if you'd like to join us over there. All right everybody have a fantastic day and evening. Bye.